Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be sharing a script I made to rotate a HDRI and render thumbnails at each angle. So this is going to be helpful when you're selecting which angle you want to have your HDRI in your final image. And this script is going to enable you to quickly see thumbnail renders of various light scenarios which you can then apply to your scene. And as you know, I love a script that will save time. So if you haven't already checked out the copy and paste script video we made, then check that out. The link should be up here somewhere or down in the description. As self-taught rather than a coder, at the moment at least, the script might not look that pretty, but it works and that's the main thing. If anyone does have any suggestions on how we can tighten up this script, then I'm all ears. But as I said, it works and that's the main thing. Now, it's not only the camera and the exposure that's affecting our lighting. We've also got a HDRI in here, and that's our main light. And we wanna make sure that our shadows are being cast in the best way possible. That means we can rotate our HDRI, and it's gonna affect our lighting. A quick way to select your light is the light lister, which is up here, and it's gonna list all the lights in your scene. And currently we just have the one HDRI light. So if I click here, it's gonna select it. We can see that over here on the right. And I'll make this view our camera, and I'll make this one top view. Let's select our light again. And what I wanna do in the dome light is lock texture to icon. And this means that if I rotate the icon in the viewport, it's gonna rotate our HDRI image, and that's gonna move our sun position, and it's gonna change the shadows. So to show you what I mean, let's run an interactive render again. And we're rendering V-Ray Camera 2, which is this viewport. But if I jump back in to the top view, it's going to start rendering the top view, which we don't want. So we want to be able to interact in this top view, but we want to be rendering Camera 2. So let's go back into Camera 2, open up our render settings. And what we want to do with V-Ray Camera 2, we want to set that padlock. You can see you can select any of the viewports and padlock it. So now when this top view becomes active, it's still only going to render Camera 2. And now when I rotate our light, we can see that I've rotated the, the clouds and the light and the shadows are going to change. So this is cool. So you could just rotate this and just wait until you find a nice angle. But there is a way of rotating this camera, say, every 10 degrees and rendering out a quick sample so we can make sure that we have the best light scenario possible. And that would involve us animating this light. So I'm going to turn on angle snaps and that's going to snap by 5 degrees. So you can see down here in this Z, I've rotated it by minus 10. And then if I do it again, it'll be minus 20. And that's kind of what we want to render. So what we could do is turn on auto key and set the current frame with our light selected. We've got our locked texture on. And if I go to frame two and rotate it by 10 degrees, and again, we'll go to frame two and rotate by another 10 degrees, or we could just type in this dialog. And I'm just gonna turn off auto key and let's go back to frame one. So now we have three different images and we've rotated the light by 10 degrees each time. So you could go through and do this 36 times. So you get all 360 degrees, but that might take you a little while. So instead, I have wrote a script. It's not the prettiest script, and I'm sure it could be optimized a lot more. And if you go to the resources, you'll see a script in there that you can go to scripting, open script, and just load that up. And you can see in here, the green is what it's doing. Um, I could probably spend some time and optimize this section here but essentially you need to select your HDRI and make sure you have a HDR plugged in so we've got our light selected and if we go to our material editor as well I just want to make sure that the bitmap is 
on zero because I know we updated it earlier, but this will just keep things simple. So we've got a horizontal rotation on zero and we've got lock to texture on, time slide is on zero. Now we can just run the script. So we'll just go tools, evaluate all, and you'll see that what's happening is it's rotating that light and it's creating a keyframe for each of those. So you can see our light rotating now. So all we need to do now is render an animation. So we'd go range from zero to 35. So zero counts as frame one. So we've got 36 frames. So that's all 360 degrees at 10 degrees. And we want to save it out and we'll go to the frame buffer and we want to save the separate render channels. We don't want to save the alpha, but let's select a path for this to go. So I've created a folder called lighting angles and this is camera two. So let's create a folder called cam two. We can also create cam one as well while we're here. Within camera two, let's call this lighting angles dot jpg. We'll save that. Now we don't want to render at full res as we only want to see a rough idea of what this lighting is. So let's go to our image sampler and we'll have it on progressive and we only want it to render for 20 seconds each frame. And there's also something else we can do in the VUA frame buffer. And that is to bring this to a test resolution of 25%. So it's only gonna render 25% of our full size render settings. And there's one other thing we wanna turn on and that's under global DMC and it's lock noise pattern. And I will show you why we want that on once we've rendered. So we have created our light and we have rotated it by 10 degrees. We've created an animation. We've set the file output. So now we can just hit render. Don't worry about this dialog box. It's a max warning. Just go and grab a cup of coffee and wait for this to all render out and we'll jump back in. So I have our renders done. This image on the left doesn't have locked noise on. There's not a lot of difference when we see the single images, but I'm just going to hold next and you can see us just sequencing through these images. And you can see there's a lot of noise movement. It's kind of distracting. Um, whereas the one with the locked noise has a little less noise movement and we can just kind of look at the lighting and we can see how that shadow is moving around our image. This is our other angle. So if I just hold next and we can see how the light's affecting our image. And then when I find an angle that I like, so I think that looks pretty good. We can see by the title up here what degree this is. So 32 looks good in both images, so I'm happy to use that. And then if we jump back into 3ds Max and we go to frame 32, we'll see that that is minus 40. So that's the light angle that we want. So all I'm going to do then is select all these keyframes and delete them. And that means our camera is now going to stay at minus 40 degrees. Hi guys, and thanks for watching. I hope you found that video useful. This video is actually part of a larger course, so if you think you find that useful, then check out the link in the description and feel free to like and subscribe.